Welcome to our AEN webinar. My name is Wolf Armbruster. My name is Rüdiger Eichholz. And I am Thomas Nordeisen. And our subject today is Needle tip control in ultrasound guided interventions and procedures. So mainly we're talking about ultrasound guided nerve blocks and vascular access. You see three speakers here because we are doing a lot of ultrasound courses together. Why do we recommend to use ultrasound in invasive procedures? We all know the cases with landmark vascular access, with difficult situations where we have displacements of catheters as shown here. Or in this uh, photo you see a lot of catheters and the one in the middle with the uh, red text obviously has a little bit of an unusual position uh, on the lateral side of the clavicle and if you look at this on a chest x-ray you will find the ultrasound guided placements of two catheters the blue ones and the um, displacement of the red one which was uh, placed in the subclavian artery in an emergency situation so nobody um, tells that using ultrasound reduces complications as such so we need to have some ideas how to really um, master this method professionally. So what do we need? We normally talk about three pillars as preconditions for safe and successful ultrasound guided procedures. So the first one is basically probe maneuver. So we need to know and to practice how to handle the probe, how to to get what we want on the ultrasound screen. So how to get the target structure. And the second, what we need, the second pillar is sono anatomy. So we need to have a deep knowledge of uh, what we are looking at. And the third thing, and this is gonna be the major thing we, were, we are uh, talking about today, this is needle tip control. To start with, we go over some uh, basic information so that we know what we're talking about um, within the rest of this webinar. So we look at the lateral neck on these two videos here and the anatomical structures um, are shown in a transverse cut, which is also known as short axis. So the other term we need is obviously a longitudinal cut or long axis, which is shown here on a radial artery on the uh, mid forearm. And um, in contrast to this, uh, what we call axis uh, terminology, we talk about planes. Planes refer to the needle guidance in relation to the scanning plane and not to anatomy. So the um, axis um, terminology refers to anatomy only and the plane terminology refers to how to guide the needle into the scanning plane. And this shows an um, out-of-plane procedure here. So with only one little point where the needle cuts the scanning plane, whereas here in an in-plane procedure, we ideally see the whole needle in the scanning plane. What else is important before we start? We need to know how to orientate the marker and the probe. So how to put the probe on the patient to have a good orientation um, with a needle in the patient and on the ultrasound screen. So as a basic rule, we recommend to orientate the, uh, the probe marker to our own left eye. And this results in a good orientation so that the left side on the screen is in fact also the left side of the probe on the patient. This is a general rule. Of course, in some procedures, we have exceptions from this. Okay, so marker to the left eye of the examiner. Let's look on some uh, ultrasound guided interventions. So we put the probe on the patient, take a needle and uh, puncture the skin. And as it happens to be, the needle gets behind the scanning plane. And so we create a hematoma and we um, withdraw the needle, get the second hematoma, try again, get a third hematoma. So um, this is a situation that to be honest, happens again and again. So what was wrong here? So ultrasound as such doesn't really improve anything. So in this case, there was no needle tip control. 
So uh, remember, never lose your needle tip. And for this, we need uh, methods how to actually achieve this. Let's go over some basic probe handling uh, methods. So first of all, in an out-of-plane procedure, we recommend to direct the bevel of the needle towards the probe. The reason is that once the, uh, um, the needle gets into the scanning plane, the bevel of the needle creates a good uh, reflection of the sound waves back to the probe. Whereas when you direct the bevel downwards, or if you uh, insert the needle too deeply, then you will have the same uh, conditions for the sound reflection. So part of the sound is being reflected away from the probe, so you won't have um, a, a good ultrasound image. So bevel up is important in ultrasound in um, out-of-plane procedures. Let's look at in-plane procedures. So whenever it is possible, we try to have a parallel needle path in relation to uh, the footprint. So this again creates good uh, reflections of the uh, sound waves back to the probe and uh, of course in this case um, the bevel is directed towards the probe too. And this is possible let's say in distal sciatic nerve blocks or in um, tap blocks too, but we may have anatomical situations where this is difficult. So the angle of the needle is a little steeper um, or in vascular axis here in a subclavian axis um, there is uh, no option to have this parallel needle path in relation to the footprint. So what do we do? As a very simple method, we can try to uh, work with our probe. So this is probe handling again. This is the situation. So uh, most of the um, sound energy is being reflected away from the probe. So what we try to do whenever it is possible anatomically, we slightly put emphasis on uh, one corner of the probe to have a more parallel course of the needle in relation to the footprint and hence we get better uh, sound reflection. And um, this um, method is also available as a software solution of, um, of some manufacturers uh, which we see here. So um, normally we believe that the sound wave um, actually travels in a perpendicular direction from the footprint to uh, into the tissue. But we can actually tell the, uh, the piezo crystals to uh, angulate and to send the uh, sound wave in a specific angle in relation to the footprint. And this is shown here. So you see this line with the little points and this is actually the direction of the sound waves uh, which are directed towards a target structure. So we have the, uh, the probe sitting on top of the ultrasound image here and now the sound travels onto this catheter and uh, therefore creates excellent uh, sound reflections back to the probe. And this is shown here in a uh, plural catheter. And, uh, but there is one thing you've got to keep in mind because um, beyond this uh, line with the little dots, the image isn't as good as inside this field and the, uh, the reason is that um, uh, not many piezos create the B-mode image in this uh, area. So whenever you use this um, software solution, you've got to keep in mind not to have your target structure uh, outside of this field. So just don't go here because the visibility of uh, your needle tip will be worse than not having this mode on. Let's talk about hardware solutions. Of course, we all know echogenic needles and they have got these little corner stones inside that create a better reflection um, despite very steep angles. And this is what you can see here. You see a normal needle uh, which actually goes in in a quite shallow angle and the ultrasound needle um, is inserted much steeper and creates a much brighter signal. And on the second image, you see a very steep angle on the ultrasound needle side. And uh, on the other side, you only see a slight shadow. So there are no reflections of the needle shaft back to the probe. But because the needle is perfectly placed 
in the center of the scanning plane, it creates a shadow uh, below the needle. So you only have an indirect uh, vision of this needle. So whenever you have very steep um, puncture angles or you work uh, very close to um, vulnerable structures like the pleura, why not using an echogenic needle? As an example, we uh, present a uh, vascular axis of the um, axillary vein or the subclavian vein. So what you see here is the normal sonoanatomy. So on the um, uh, medial side, we look at the vein with the um, typical uh, double pulsation and lateral from this, we have the uh, subclavian artery. And again, lateral, we, um, we see structures, more um, uh, echogenic structures, which represent the brachial plexus. And on the other side, you see the pleura with some lung sliding. And uh, under the uh, plexus structures, you see a little bit of a bone shadow. This is the rib. However, we only use this um, ultrasound image as a general anatomical orientation so we want to do the puncture in long axis so for this we rotate the probe we deliberately uh, place the clavicle uh, on the image so it's just under the pictogram or under under the body marker and now we've got the subclavian vein in long axis and under the vein we've got the first drip and then we've got pleura and the second drip and as we know that the artery is lateral to the vein, we just check it to be, um, to be certain, to be um, also safe for the patient. Check the artery and in uh, bad scanning uh, conditions, we also may place the pulse wave Doppler inside here and go back to the vein. Take an ultrasound needle because it's a steep angle and the direction of the needle is towards the first rib as, a, as an additional um, a safety feature not to cause a pneumothorax. And here again you can see how the guide wire is uh, placed directly into uh, the vessel. So uh, some experienced users they do not use syringes anymore on the needle so they, they pre-position the guide wire inside the needle and then um, place the needle tip inside the vessel under direct vision and then insert the guide wire directly. This is quite smart actually, but only for experienced users. What else is available? So uh, on, on the hardware side, so we have um, uh, options to have like an in-plane guidance for probes. So there is a little plastic clip which we uh, connect to the probe then we have a sterile cover and uh, on the lateral side of the probe we've got this little device that keeps the needle inside the scanning plane only for in-plane procedures so this is the result so it kind of prevents uh, on the one hand the uh, lateral displacement of the needle in relation to the scanning plane and also it prevents the uh, the rotation error so that the uh, the needle um, is not in the same direction as the scanning plane. So we show um, this device again on a uh, subclavian uh, vein puncture here. So the needle is inserted and you see here that the needle is just slightly too short. So we uh, move the probe um, away a tiny little bit until we safely get into the vessel. And here you see the technique how to pre-position the guide wire and very cautiously um, insert it into uh, the vessel. And this is something we would really recommend you to do. This is a guide wire control. So uh, because of uh, the material of the guide wire, we have very, very good reflections. And so it really takes only a few seconds and then you are certain uh, where the guide wire is in. You can do this in short axis as uh, as just shown and also you can rotate the probe and um, see it in long axis. Okay, now we've presented uh, some probe handling techniques on how to improve needle tip control. We have presented some software solutions, some hardware solutions, but now we're coming to, uh, to the most important thing, the needle navigation techniques which you can use um, 
in any case, whether you have any hardware or software assistance or not. So we have um, kind of divided these methods into uh, those for beginners. So we talk about angle navigation and a walk down technique with angle adjustment. And for more advanced users, we talk about the walk down technique with probe alignment. And at the end, the, the smartest and um, as we believe the, uh, the safest technique is walk down technique with probe alignment and probe rotation. So let's go over this. Angle navigation is a rough orientation on how to navigate the needle in the patient. So let's um, go over in an example. So we place the probe on the patient and the probe sits on the patient uh, in a perpendicular angle on the skin. So we try to find out how deep is our target structure. And uh, we look on the ultrasound image and we see it here. So we aim for the 12 o'clock position of the target structure and we read the depth on the lateral side of the ultrasound image. So we take this depth which is uh, roughly one centimeter in this case and we um, take the same distance away from the probe. So we don't talk about distance from the plastic cover of the probe, we talk about the distance where the scanning plane actually sits on um, the footprint. So by this we create um, a rectangle and then we penetrate the skin, use 45 degrees and then you can puncture your target structure. However, this method is somewhat unsafe. Why? Because um, having all the correct angles is not very easy. So uh, using a steeper angle, so let's say instead of 45 degrees you were using 50 degrees or 60 degrees, you would actually penetrate a target structure before you have even seen the needle tip into the, in the scanning plane. So this might be dangerous and on the other hand using like a 40 or 35 degree angle you uh, will reach the scanning plane uh, before you are in the 12 o'clock position so you may get the needle tip behind the scanning plane and this is not wanted. So this is a method which is suitable for superficial structures like in vascular access. So where uh, you want to actually penetrate the target structure anyway. But uh, we wouldn't recommend it to, to use in nerve blocks. So we um, show you an example. This is uh, an, a vascular axis in a femoral artery on the uh, left side. So you see in the ultrasound film that there is some tissue movement in the 12 o'clock position right now and then you see the needle tip being inserted into um, the artery and then uh, here again you see the guide wire being inserted on the spot so it was pre-positioned. So we look at it again you see the, uh, the motion of the tissue you, you see the uh, needle tip and the guide wire. So it's a good method however as, um, as we said uh, rather use it for superficial structures and uh, for vascular axis. So in, in deep structures um, it is um, quite easy to understand that the, um, the errors of using the wrong angles actually get um, greater and greater. So uh, what methods do we have to improve this situation? Let's have a look on the uh, walk down technique with angle adjustment which was actually uh, published in 2006 already. In this case we place the probe on the patient again as we always do and then we insert the needle in a very shallow angle. So um, on purpose we uh, want to get into the scanning plane um, in a distance to the target structure. So first of all we want to identify the needle tip. This is what we see, see on the uh, ultrasound clip on a um, IJ axis. So we see the needle tip in the uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle. And then we uh, withdraw the needle and we adjust the angle to a steeper angle, um, insert the needle again until we get the first reflex of the needle tip in the scanning plane. So have a look here. So the, uh, the needle tip slowly approaches stepwise the 12 o'clock position of the uh, target structure. So you may do this again. You may do it two, three, 
or four times, whatever is uh, needed, and until you are on the 12 o'clock position, and then you see how the, uh, the needle tip um, sits on uh, top of the vessel with the largest diameter just uh, uh, under the needle tip, and then you can put the needle in. Here again, there might be some disadvantages because you've got uh, quite a, a lot of needle passes. So, especially in patients on the ICU, uh, with a lot of heparin or with uh, um, coagulation abnormalities, you may not want to have many needle passes. So, to improve this, we have another technique whenever anatomically uh, possible. So, we need some uh, anatomical space for the probe to actually be moved over the patient. So, the, um, the angle of needle insertion is basically the same. Uh, aiming on an early identification of the needle tip very close to the probe. So when uh, the first reflex occurs, we stop the needle, move the probe, forward the needle, stop again, move the probe like here, and uh, insert the needle a little more until we get to the 12 o'clock position. And then we can puncture, puncture um, the vessel. So this is a stepwise approach where um, either the needle moves or the probe. So this is a, a very important information. So don't move both at the same time. So either the needle or um, the probe. Let's have a look at this in a different way in a uh, nerve block animation. So um, the needle tip is in the scanning plane and we stop the needle. We uh, move the probe just slightly. Very tiny little, little walk down maneuvers. We um, insert the needle again to get another needle tip reflex uh, on the ultrasound screen and we do this again and again until we approach um, the nerve. And now we look from a different angle in the scanning plane now. So tiny little little uh, maneuvers once we get very close to the target structure and um, now we can inject uh, the local anesthetic. However, shown here, we, um, for didactic reasons, we have um, chosen the 12 o'clock position, but usually in nerve blocks, we don't want the 12 o'clock position, so we want to have a, um, a tangential needle pass to the 9 o'clock or the, um, the 3 o'clock position in order not to um, accidentally get into the nerve. But this method is uh, certainly very, very uh, good for nerve blocks in general. So, coming to the last procedure, um, where we think it is the safest and the best and, and the one you will have most fun with. So, um, um, this is the walk down technique with probe alignment and probe rotation at the very end of this uh, procedure. So, uh, the beginning is exactly the same like in the method shown before. So, we just show the last step here on how to get to the 12 o'clock position. And now you don't uh, keep on going with the needle and, um, and complete the, the procedure. First of all, you rotate the probe. So we had a, a short axis view before and an out-of-plane um, needle um, approach. And now we get through the probe rotation an in-plane um, picture uh, in, of the needle and a long axis uh, picture of the anatomical structure. And then we can insert the needle under full vision. And you see this on the ultrasound image here, IJ uh, puncture. You also can see that very easily you get kissing walls and you may approach to the posterior wall, which you only see um, uh, that well in in-plane and uh, long axis procedures. And uh, again, here you may insert the guide wire, um, either with uh, pre-positioning or you may, um, as most of us are probably used to, we may use a syringe and do some aspiration and then insert the guide wire. But why don't you look at the guide wire um, while you insert it? Because we all know the case that for some reason uh, we get blood out of the vessel, but then can't insert the guide wire. So with ultrasound, you may easily visualize what the problem is. So either it is not inside the vessel or it is um, actually gone uh, through the posterior wall or third option, something in the vessel um, 
uh, is obstructing the um, the gut wiring, like thrombosis or something. Okay, let's have a look on nerve blocks with the same method. So we show again the last walk down steps. In this case, again to the twelve o'clock uh, position, and then. Uh, in a little distance, we rotate the probe so that the, the last step towards uh, the vulnerable nerve structure is very well controlled. Okay, so what else is an issue? Look at this. So especially in nerve blocks, we have a situation that the visibility of nerves um, varies a lot and it's dependent on the angle of insonation. So look at this. So we have uh, we put the probe um, on the nerve, and now the reflection is not very good because it's not a perpendicular angle on the course of the nerve. So we slightly tilt the probe to get a very good image on the ultrasound uh, screen. And then, using uh, um, a short axis and in-plane approach, it may be uh, an issue that. For some reason, it happens that the needle is not in the scanning plane. So what do you do? Do you move the needle or what do you do? So if you tilt the probe, you get, um, uh, you may lose your image. So what you do instead, you do a little a parallel sliding of the probe, keeping the angle. So you um, hopefully get a good image and uh, a good identification of the needle for a safe um, approach towards the nerve. And also, in in-plane procedures, you may have a rotation error so that the, uh, the needle path is not perfectly aligned, aligned with the scanning plane. And you also, of course, then have to correct this error by probe rotation. Another thing is the uh, inspection of guide wire position, which we were talking about before already. And this is um, a... Um, method that only takes a few seconds and gives you a lot more confidence, especially in difficult cases, in cases on ICU with um, uh, coagulation uh, abnormalities in patients where you need to insert large, large uh, catheters. So as shown here, you see two hyperechogenic dots traveling through uh, the sternocleidal muscle into the IJ. And of course, you can do this in short axis, as shown here, or also in long axis. And then you may proceed with your um, dilator and put the catheter in. And this is how we end up having done successful procedures. So uh, we end with the recording here and um, and continue with the, the um, recording of the three of us. Thank you. As a summary of our useful information about safe needle tip control and navigation techniques, we created a poster. The bad news is it's just available in German language. But our textbook is available in English and of course in German and you can find it on our webpage. Coming back to the very beginning of our presentation, where we were talking about the three pillars, so the preconditions of safe and successful ultrasound-guided interventions, which were probe maneuvers, sonar anatomy, and needle tip control, we would like to add two more pillars, so with five at the end. So we need sustainable teaching concepts, and at the end, we need to practice a lot to achieve more. Thank you for listening.